All right, uh, the full authority meeting is now recording and streaming live on Facebook. Great, thank you, Marianne. On, on March 26, 2020, the Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks issued a uh, direction to all conservation authorities recommending amendments to CA's administrative bylaws to allow for certain electronic processes during declared states of emergencies. This direction is posted on KCCA's website and included in this agenda on page two. The special meeting is being called in order to update KCCA's administrative bylaw as per the minister's direction. As the administrative building is closed to the public at this time and the facility does not provide for social distancing of attendees, this special meeting will be held electronically. The public may view the meeting live at the following links on YouTube and then on Facebook page. Draft minutes of the meeting will be posted to KCCA's website on April the 16th, 2020. Board members, staff, guests, and members of the public are reminded that the full authority board committee meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the authority's website along with the official written minutes. As such, comments and opinions expressed may be published and any comments expressed by individual board members, guests, and the general public are their own and do not represent the opinions or comments of the full authority and or the KCCA board of directors. The re this recorded video of the full authority meeting is not considered the official record of that meeting. The official record of the full authority meeting shall consist solely of the minutes approved by the authority. Uh, Elizabeth, could you do a roll call, please, to make sure that we have everyone accounted for? Yes, Mr. Chair, and I just ask members uh, to say yay or nay that they're present. Dennis Krevitz? Yay. Dominique Jaguer? Yay. Stephen Harvey? Here. Grant Jones? Here. Bill Mackey? Bill is having difficulties logging in. I'm trying to work through it with him. Steve Peters, Joe Preston, yay, Elizabeth Peloza, here, Allison Warwick, here, Ralph Winfield, here. Mr. Chair, we have eight of ten members. Okay, so that gives us quorum. So we're okay to go ahead. I'm suggesting, uh, sorry, the recorded votes will probably be the best way to make sure that we, that, that uh, transparency is declared and that everyone can see exactly who has voted. Under Allison's suggestion, we may find that that is slow. However, at this point in time, we'll start off with a recorded vote for anything that we need to do. So you've had a chance to take a look at the agenda. You've had a chance to take a look at the memo from the minister having to do with the electronic, uh, the electronic meetings during the COVID outbreak. Um, any comments or anything like that about that at this point in time? Okay, with that in mind, I'm just trying to find my thumbnails here. Mr. Chair, if Mary Ann yeah. can just move the slides forward, we can see the motion on the screen. Yeah, I think she was trying to get Bill on line there. So um, so you can see that you've, you've had a chance to take a look at the bylaw amendment, the administrative bylaw amendment, uh, having to do with the minister's direction from March 26th. Uh, are there any comments, questions about that at all? Okay, with that in mind then, uh, the motion would be to, that the amendment to the Kettle Creek Conservation Authority's administrative bylaw dated September, oh, that's not right. Where's our, do we have our motion someplace, Elizabeth? Yeah, Mr. Chair, if Mary Ann can just move the slide forward one. Um, so the minister um, has given us direction. The bylaw that you have in front of you gives you definitions for right. emergency and electronic meetings, um, sets out uh, that we can meet electronically where possible, that we would remain open to the public. Um, we've also included the protocol for the electronic meetings included 
in okay. um, the bylaw. And Marianne, yeah. if you go slide ahead, we'll see the um, motion. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So the motion is as forwarded in the advanced um, packages. Uh, this is abbreviated that you're seeing on the screen here. Under number one, the entire bylaw is included uh, in there. And number two indicates that this administrative bylaw would take effect uh, immediately. As members are aware, if we don't pass this amendment to the bylaw of this special meeting, then for the duration of the uh, declared emergency, we would not be able to uh, meet uh, as a board. So uh, we do need a two thirds motion to pass the bylaw. Um, and as stated earlier by the chair, uh, when the members are ready to do so, we would do a recorded vote. Okay, so let's start off with the motion. Do we have someone to move this motion? I would so move. Okay, move by, move by Ralph, move it. Sec seconded by? Joe. By Joe. Joe. Okay, thank you, Joe. Let's go forward with our with our voting then, Elizabeth, please. Recorded vote. Dennis Kravitz. Yes. Dominique Jaguer. Yes. Grant Jones. Yes. Bill Mackey. Steve Peters. Still not online. Joe Preston. Yes. Elizabeth Peloza. Yes. Allison Borwick. Is Allison muted? Um, yes. Thank you, Allison. Sorry, Rep was... Winfield. Yes. And Mr. Chair, that motion passes. Thank you very much. Okay, with that in mind, we'll declare the special meeting adjourned. Do I need a motion for that, Elizabeth? Please. Can I have a motion to adjourn the special meeting, please? M moved I, by? I was moved. So moved. By Ralph, seconded by Grant. Need a vote again, Elizabeth, please. Just a show of hands, all in favor. All in favor, show of hands. Okay, Thank opposed, you. Benny, okay, carried. Okay, so let's go on to the full authority agenda then, please. So we need to do a roll call again, just to make sure that everyone is, is uh, uh, declared part, because I know we're not sure, do we have Bill on yet? No, it doesn't look like it. So Bill is on. He, he's just there. Wait, he's on. He's on now. Okay, good. So let's uh, start off with a roll call again, then, please, Elizabeth. Dennis Kravitz. Here. There. Yeah. Dominique, Dominique Jaguer. Present. Stephen Wait, Harvey. Uh, here. Yeah. Grant Jones. Here. Bill Mackey. Bill Mackey, if you can just say that you're here. Thank you. Steve Peters. <coughs> I Joe Preston. Here. Elizabeth Peloza. Here. Allison Warwick. Here. Ralph Winfield. Here. So we have nine of 10 members, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, and so the first thing is the minutes of the meetings. So the February 12th full authority meeting and the February 19th annual general meeting, that those meeting, the minutes of those meetings be approved. Um, I'm going so to, moved. okay, moved by Joe Preston, seconded by? Ralph Winfield. Ralph Winfield, thank you. Mr. Chair, may I just make a comment on the yes. minutes? Just because my, my name there, on several occasions, there's a typo in my name. So okay. if that could be corrected, thank you. 
Okay, with that in mind, let's uh, um, let's decide. Do we want to do a roll call every time, a recorded vote every time, or do we want to use a show of hands? How do you want to do it? Or just want to go with anyone? Oh, hi, Bill. Uh, uh, do we just want to go with anyone who is opposed to, to declare that? What's the best way? Your thoughts? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this is uh, Grant. I believe from what I've been told from the, the county and the township that uh, you need to actually speak uh, yes or no. That's okay. what I was told to make it actually official. Okay, so we will use recorded votes then? Yes, that would be my recommendation. Okay, thank you. So, uh, minutes of the meetings of the February 12th full authority meeting and the February 19th <coughs> annual general meeting be approved. Moved by Joe, seconded by Ralph. Uh, recorded vote, please. Mr. Chair, and I note the minutes will be approved as amended, noting uh, that Dominique's name will be spelled correctly, with my apologies. Dennis Kravitz? Yes, yes. Dominique Jiguier? Yes. Grant Jones? Yes. Bill Mackey? Yes. Steve Peters? Joe Preston? Yes. Elizabeth Peloza? Yes. Allison Warwick? Yep. Ralph Winfield? Yes. Steve Harvey? Yes. And the motion passes. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, next thing on the agenda, folks, is matters arising. And there's a media report, the April watershed conditions, the Elgin Clean Water Program 2019 year end report, and the MECP consultation on the CA Act update. Now those were all included in your in your packages. Um, and so to save time, what we'll do is we will do a motion for matters arising A through D. Are there any questions or comments, first of all, about those four items that the staff can um, explain or clarify? From anyone? Okay, seeing none. I need a I need a mover and a seconder then for that for that motion that the staff reports under matters rising A through D be received. Moved by So moved. <clears throat> Allison. By Allison, seconded by Bill Mackey. <clears throat> uh, recorded vote, please. Elizabeth. Dennis Kravitz. Dominique Shiguer? Yes. Grant Jones? Yes. Bill Mackey? Yes. Joe Preston? Yes. Elizabeth Peloza? Yes. Allison Warwick? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Ralph Winfield? Yes. Steve Harvey? Yes. The motion passes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, matters arising, item E, the Kettle Creek Dog Park Agreement Renewal. Uh, comments, questions? Does anyone want to speak to it at all? Mr. Chair, um, this is a, a standard agreement that the authority has had with the Municipality of Central Algon and City of St. Thomas. It's built in the existing agreement uh, to allow for one renewal term of five years. Both the City of St. Thomas and uh, Central Elgin have indicated their desire to proceed with that renewal. This is a masking for a formality to have the um, uh, an official mo motion that uh, the board agrees that the Kettle Creek Dog Park Agreement be renewed for another five-year term. Okay, thank you. Questions, comments, from councillors? Seeing none, the recommendation then is that the Kettle Creek Dog Park Agreement be renewed for another five-year term. Need a mover and a seconder, please. I Jones moves. Okay, uh, Grant Jones is a mover. Ralph Winfield is a seconder. Recorded vote, please, Elizabeth. Dennis Kravitz. Yes. Yeah. Dominique Jaguer. Yes. Grant Jones. Yes. 
Bill Mackey? Yes. Joe Preston? Yes. Elizabeth Peloza? Yay. Allison Warwick? Yes. Ralph Winfield? Yes. Steve Harvey? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you very much. We'll go on to the next page of the agenda correspondence. And we have correspondence from Conservation Ontario from the municipality. Yes, yeah, sorry, Mr. Chair. There's no additional correspondence than what was uh, sent out in the advanced packages. Okay. So we all have had a chance to take a look at this. Are there any questions at all? Comments? Clarification that needs to happen? Seeing none, the recommendation is that the correspondence be received. You a <coughs> seconder for that, please? Elizabeth. Elizabeth is the mover. Bill, yes. Bill is the seconder. Recorded vote, please, Elizabeth. Dennis Kravitz? Yes. Yes. Dominic Jaguer? Yes. Grant Jones? Yes. Bill Mackey? Yes. Joe Preston? Joe? Yes. Thank you. Elizabeth Peloza? Yay. Allison Warwick? Yes. Ralph Winfield? Yes. Steve Harvey? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Okay, so now moving on from there. Our COVID I no COVID ID, COVID nineteen employee plan. Uh, Elizabeth, do you want to go through that? I will briefly. I think the the purpose of the report was just to give the, the members um, an idea of what has happened with staffing at the authority. Um, the office did close March 16th and all full-time staff are working remotely. I think it is working well. Uh, we have a workload and minimal staffing necessary to conduct business and all seasonal staff uh, will not be hired until operations normalize. Uh, so it's the recommendation is that staff report on the COVID-19 employee plan be received and that the general manager be directed to implement the employee plan as outlined in the staff report. Okay, thanks, Elizabeth. Any questions at all, folks? This is, you know, came upon us kind of suddenly and it is a new way of doing business. Comments at all? Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Yes. It's Elizabeth. Yep. Um, through you to staff, thank you for the report. Um, just looking for clarification that the Conservation Authority has applied for the 75% wage subsidy available through the government for CERB. Okay, Elizabeth. Mr. Chair, thank you to Elizabeth for the question. Um, we are working with Conservation Ontario uh, right now. There is uh, questions as whether or not the authority actually um, qualifies for that funding um, because we do receive uh, some funding from the government. Uh, there's suggestions that we might not qualify. Uh, a number of the larger CAs are advocating uh, for especially CAs like us where we have business sectors uh, within our programs that do not get any government funding that will be significantly impacted by this. Uh, such as our campgrounds, that it's the hope um, that will be viewed in some instances as a charity um, or as a, a business entity for those programs and services and qualify. So we have not as yet applied, but we're trying to work through to get clarification that we can. Uh, thank you for that, and uh, I look forward to future updates on that uh, question regarding the trail maintenance, as mentioned in the report, that it's uh, not happening. Are the trails, I know the trails are closed, are they marked appropriately for the public to be aware that the trails are not being maintained and may contain some hazards? Yes, Mr. Chair, through you to Elizabeth, um, that's covered off in the, in the next report, but that's correct. Our trails are... Um, marked uh, accordingly uh, for closure and no trespassing up until uh, May 1st. But after the provincial uh, announcement earlier this month, we uh, actually <clears throat> increased our signage on our trails. 
um, and increased barriers uh, to prevent access to our trails and all of our properties. And staff continue to monitor um, access to our trails as well. So where barriers have been removed, um, they're put back in place um, or beefed up if we see uh, that people are circumventing those barriers. Okay. Uh, and three, uh, Mr. Chair, just one follow-up question to, um, to Elizabeth. How is our staff doing with working remotely and not being in contact with each other, like morale-wise? Mr. Chair, um, I'm very proud of our staff, um, as everyone I'm sure is at this time. Uh, the staff have made um, a great transition to working remotely. Um, and we have uh, done, I think, a good job in terms of staying connected. We're doing, keeping up with um, uh, weekly staff meetings uh, via electronic uh, components such as this. Um, as well as I'm daily in contact with each one of the staff. So um, despite the circumstances, I think we're, the morale is good. Um, and uh, in some ways it's exciting to look at new ways of doing business and keeping our programs and services available to the public. Thank you. Any other questions at all? Thanks Elizabeth for that, for those questions. That's great. I'm sure that you're all living through this in your own organizations as well. And, and uh, it is, uh, I have to say that having sort of been in the background to a certain extent through this transition, it's, I've been very impressed with how staff has done as well. So uh, thanks for those comments, Elizabeth. Okay, with that in mind, let's take a look at uh, page 53 of your agenda. Uh, and Yes, Sorry, Mr. Chair, just yep. to interrupt. I don't think we actually passed the motion for the employee plan. Oh, sorry. Okay. With that in mind, we have a, we had a mover and seconder though, right? Yes, we did. If we did, could I have it again? Because I believe I missed it. Okay, for that, for the employee. So okay, well, there you go. Joe Preston is moving it. Seconded Elizabeth. by Elizabeth Peloza. Sorry about that. Okay, let's have a vote. On the, on the motion, Dennis Kravitz? Yes. Dominique Chiguer? Yes. yes. Grant Jones? Yes. Bill Mackey? Yes. Joe Preston? Yes. Elizabeth Peloza? Yes. Allison Warwick? Yeah. Ralph Winfield? Yes. Steve Harvey? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Okay, the next report then on, on page 53 of the agenda. From Elizabeth, uh, the COVID-19 programs and services planning. Elizabeth? So Mr. Chair, I wanted to give the members a, a more detailed view of what programs and services <clears throat> are taking in this emergency and to what extent it's impacting uh, those, the delivery of the programs and services in the budget. So um, further to Elizabeth's question about our qualification for the 75% wage subsidy, um, there is also um, uh, discrepancies as to how CAs fit into the emergency services order as well. So Conservation Ontario is working with MECP to determine uh, if CAs follow under that opening section of the regulation, which is nothing in the order precludes operation or delivery of services by publicly funded organizations that deliver or support government operations and services. My understanding is that there's been a couple of conversations between the ministry and Conservation Ontario now on that. Um, the ministry is appreciating uh, CA's kind of funneling questions through CO on this. But the best direction that we have right now is that we should be that the ministry wants us to look at that um, opening section of the regulation very narrowly. And the best advice we've received so far is to evaluate each program and service in the context of those essential workplace listings. So Marianne, if I could have the next slide. Uh, as you'll see in your advanced package, we tried to look at each program and service in, service in that manner. 
Um, I'm pleased to say that the majority of our programs and services are operating as usual remotely, and you can see those on the screen in front of you now. So our financial administration um, made a smooth transition, as does public relations, into operating remotely. We have canceled all our community events uh, for the foreseeable future. Flood forecasting, I would view as an essential service, but it is able to continue operating remotely. And our tree and wood lot service, in, including our contract with the County of Elgin for the delivery and enforcement of the tree, but, tree cutting bylaw, uh, continues. And staff have been working very diligently to uh, develop safe operating procedures for when we do have to uh, travel at this time. Next slide, please. This next grouping of programs and services are ones that um, have a little bit more impact. So I've rated them as, as low and or medium. Planning and regulations is continuing remotely. Uh, Joe is continues to work with um, applicants uh, remotely. Uh, to look at permits. Uh, he continues to work with municipalities in terms of planning act um, review as well. Of course, we're not doing any face-to-face -face meetings, um, but violations are still being, being issued and those that don't uh, impact life, property, or um, significant hazards will be dealt with after the emergency. We do expect in terms of budget that the permit revenue may drop, uh, especially with the impact to the construction industry. Environmental monitoring, um, the ministry labs are not accepting samples um, and some private labs are. So some CAs have decided to continue a sampling. Um, we have decided not to continue a sampling at this time. We don't wanna incur any more costs than we have to. And so spring sampling can occur as late as June. So right now we're delaying uh, the sampling season. Um, data loggers are still being retrieved. So not all data is being lost and those are being with, done with safe operating procedures that are being developed. And the stewardship and education program is continuing um, as much as it can. Uh, Betsy is still working with landowners remotely, but we did have to go and cancel the Children's Water Festival, and we'll re be rebooking that to 2021. Next slide. So the next grouping of programs are actually ones that decisions are required. Um, however, the atmosphere of these programs changes um, almost daily in terms of either new information released from the government or something else occurring. Um, the first one I'd like to speak to is tree planting. So the nurseries are considered essential. Uh, they've been grouped under resource and energy businesses, specifically forestry, as well as they might be grouped under the agriculture and food businesses. So the nurseries are going ahead and um, lifting seedlings and trees at this time. Um, although some of it is being delayed uh, specifically by offshore uh, labor complications. Um, and there are varying opinions on whether CA tree planting falls under the resource and energy business as essential. But what we do know is the impact to not uh, continuing with the tree planting program at this time, budget wise could be as anywhere from $60,000 or higher um, because the nurseries continue to lift the trees, uh, we are on the hook for the costs. Of Dude, those I'm trees. in now. Hey, different number. Thanks. Bye. Um, so we we do uh, by not proceeding with the tree planting, we could face a budget impact of sixty thousand dollars or higher. Uh, that would include uh, the price of the loss of trees, uh, as well as potentially. Um, loss of contracts because of our failure to plant the trees. If I can just have the next slide, Marianne. Um, so staff have been working to see if there's a way that we can deliver the program and service in keeping with the provincial orders to the best of our ability. Um, we believe the best option is to separate uh, tree planting into two service areas over the counter and hand and machine plants. Um, staff are proposing to carry out the 
over counter sales by delivering the trees directly to the customers. Uh, so we continue to take um, payment for the trees and then staff would be working with um, basically reassigning full-time staff to deliver the trees directly uh, to people's porches. Um, in terms of the machine plants, uh, we're looking at um, significantly reducing our tree planting crew to just three people. Um, and this would all, and looking at limiting our sites to the ones that are most conducive to a three crew plant. Um, and that would allow us to reduce our tree purchases to reduce costs this year. Um, remaining sites would be delayed to 2021. Staff have canceled all volunteer community plants scheduled for the spring um, and are trying to cancel those orders, those tree orders and push them to the fall. So just to recap, not moving forward with any tree planting uh, would mean an impact to the budget of $60,000 or higher uh, and the seedlings would be composted because they are perishable and still being lifted by the nursery, they would just be lost. So staff feel like it, it is imperative that we find a way uh, for this program uh, to continue uh, by looking at safe operating procedures and delivering as much stock as we can uh, to customers. Mr. Chair, I might just stop there uh, to see if there's any questions from members on the staff proposal to move ahead with the tree planting. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, this is Grant. Hi, Grant. Uh, through you to Elizabeth, uh, have you uh, tried the 1888 number uh, uh, stop the spread of, uh, stop the spread business info line? So, Mr. Chair, to Grant, if I'm understanding the question correctly, there is a 1-800 number um, that you can call to get um, some guidance on whether or not you're deemed essential or that service is deemed essential. What we're hearing back from Conservation Ontario is the ministry is listening to those calls, but they're preferring to work with Conservation Ontario and funnel CA questions through Conservation Ontario. Conservation Ontario has identified to the ministry that tree planting is one area that we would like a ruling on um, and that, uh, again, a decision needs to be made because um, of those budget reasons and because we're dealing with perishable stock. Um, as of yet, uh, the last contact I had with Conservation Ontario was last Thursday. Um, we had not yet had a ruling from the ministry. Okay, thank you. Any other questions at all? Just a further uh, comment. I, I guess, uh, in my opinion, uh, you push on. I, I hate to see you lose the whole season and, and the cost. And if there's some way of making it work, if they can find, if they can get uh, approval from the, the ministry, that that would be great. Elizabeth, comment. Mr. Chair, um, definitely. I think that's where staff is right now that we would okay. like uh, to, to move forward with this. Um, we think that we have a plan in place that will be able to do it uh, safely and is in kind of keeping with other delivery orders that are happening uh, right now. Um, and we'll continue to work with Conservation Ontario uh, to hopefully get that ruling from the minister um, before we proceed. I think um, staff are working with the other CAs as well to get a sense of their best management practices that you're, they're using for tree planting. Um, and as far as I know, there's only one um, authority right now that I'm aware of. The Grand River has canceled uh, their tree planting program for the entire year. Um, but they were using uh, outside contractors, I believe, to get their tree planting done. It's not necessarily just their staff, so it, it was a little more complicated. Okay, thank you. So do you need a direction from us then? Is that what you're looking for? I think the motion that you see in your advanced report is that um, the staff report uh, would be endorsed and that staff would work with the chair and vice chair between now and the next meeting 
if any decisions need to be made on these programs and services. Okay. But right now it would be the intention of staff to move forward uh, with tree planting. Um, and we'll work with the chair and vice chair if there's any further decisions that need to be made. Okay, any other questions on that at all folks? A question from Bill. Yep. Yeah, Elizabeth, you mentioned the uh, going to like a three person crew. So that would be probably Jeff and two other staff uh, from our full time complement. Uh, those staff are okay with the distancing that might be involved with that. Mr. Chair, definitely the planting of the trees um, for, with the machine plant where the staff are still working through the safe operating procedures. <laughs> Um, but yes, right now, um, we're working with, like I said, some of the other CAs to look at best management practices. Uh, a three person crew would definitely um, allow for safe distancing, uh, we believe right now. Yes, I guess with the plexiglass between the planters, I guess it would probably be fine. Yeah, Mr. Chair, just to clarify to Bill, for those who are familiar with the uh, tree planting apparatus. What we're talking about is just having one planter yeah. on the uh, apparatus, not two. So the crew would consist of a tractor driver, one person on the planter, and a walk behind. Okay. Quality control. Uh, sounds, so, sounds good. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Seeing none. Let's go to the recommendation then, the recommendation once again. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I, there is one other program and service that I need to recap for the board okay. members. Sorry, so go ahead. Um, so going back to Elizabeth's quest questions earlier, the trails do remain closed. Right. Um, and this is in keeping with provincial orders. We feel that our trails are single lane, they're loop trails and not conducive to social distancing. So at this time, the trails will remain closed um, until those orders are lifted. Next slide. The campgrounds um, are also closed. They were set to open May 1st. As mentioned in the advanced report, um, we don't feel that we have enough time to open those uh, campgrounds. We need at least two weeks notice um, to gear up for an opening. So what we're uh, saying right now, what was submitted in the advanced report is that if the orders were extended uh, beyond today, that we would be looking or proposing a June 1st opening. And based on the provincial um, announcement, I believe is working through the system today, they're looking at an emergency till May 12th. Um, I think we're definitely looking at a June 1st opening uh, for the campgrounds at this time. Um, and you can see on the screen and what was included in the advanced package is the uh, refunds that we would be providing uh, both the transient campers who have booked in May um, and options for our seasonal campers. Um, we're asking for patience with the campgrounds. Uh, this is a significant budget area, simply not opening for May. We're familiar with what a hit um, not having May 2-4 camping can do to our budget. We're looking at just not opening in May is upwards of $40,000 or more per park. Uh, so we don't want to hire staff until we know that we uh, can open for a good length of time. There definitely will be additional considerations brought forward to the May 20th meeting, um, depending on where we're at with this emergency and the effect that it would have on our campgrounds. But right now we're proposing a June 1st opening. Okay, questions at all folks? With the, with the delayed opening, Elizabeth, is there any consideration given to a delayed closing as well? So I think uh, we mentioned that in the advanced report, Mr. Chair. It's something that we're not ruling out, uh, but it would definitely require um, some consideration by staff. I think the biggest concerns with um, a delayed close is we have two limiting factors, whether or not we can adequately staff that 
yep. um, with a lack of students. And uh, the second one uh, would be, it would be very limited in terms of weather conditions. So we still need uh, time to um, shut the water systems down effectively. So it's not something that staff's ruled out. We're just not able to commit to it right now. Right, yeah. I know we've talked about it before, but I didn't know, um, you know, in these in this time, whether that's a possibility or not to try to regain some of that income back. So, okay. Anything else there, Elizabeth? Through you, Mr. Chair. Oh, yes. Don't Can me? I just clarify? Um, so I know the, so the campgrounds are closed and the trails are closed, but is there any uh, maintenance happening or is there a risk of falling behind when everything starts growing wild in the next few weeks? Elizabeth, question or I mean answer? So, Mr. Chair, um, the staff are doing uh, property checks uh, daily on the properties, and we've come up with safe operating procedures so that the staff can get out and do the type of maintenance that I believe Dominique's talking about. So, despite the fact that we're closed, we still need to get a handle on grass um, and those types of things. So, we've done taken measures uh, now that we're all able to roll out so that each individual staff member is being assigned equipment uh, and property so that they can undertake those um, basic maintenance procedures safely. Okay, thank you. Any other questions at all? Okay, seeing none, we can move to the recommendation then. staff report on the COVID-19 programs and services be received and that the chair and vice chair be delegated to make any required decisions on facilities opening or closing or program continuation before the next scheduled full authority meeting based on the information provided in the staff report. I need a mover and a seconder for that, please. I can move. Moved by, moved by Dominique, seconded by Bill. Any comments at all? that in mind, Elizabeth, can we do a vote, please? Dennis Kravitz? Yes. yes. Dominique Shiguer? Yes. Grant Jones? Yes. Bill Mackey? Yes. Steve Peters, I believe you're online now. Yes. Joe Preston? Yes. Elizabeth Peloza? Yes. Allison Warwick? Allison? Yep. Thank you. Ralph? Yes. Stephen Harvey? Yes. And that motion passes. Okay, thank you, folks. Okay, next on the list. I'll go back to my agenda here. Uh, so we've got um, the Conservation Ontario Guidance, the Enforcement of Public Safety and Security Order. Elizabeth? Mr. Chair, I think it's pretty much self-explanatory. Um, those were uh, advice recommendations from Conservation Ontario on those two items. Okay. Staff are not um, taking any action on them. It was just more information for the members. Okay, thank you. So the Conservation Ontario's guidance on the enforcement of public safety and security order and the guidance on procedures regulating permit hearings be received. Comments on that from our members? Seeing none, I need a motion to, re to, uh, forward to, <laughs> to move it and second it, please. Moved by Peters. Steve Peters, seconded by? I'll move, second it. Ralph Winfield. We have a vote, Elizabeth, please. Dennis Kravetz. Yes. Dominique Jaguer. Yes. Grant Jones. Yes. Bill Mackey. Yes. Steve Peters. Yes. Joe Preston. Yes. Elizabeth Peloza. Yes. Allison Borwick. Yes. Ralph Winfield. Yes. Stephen Harvey. Yes. Okay, it's Gary, thank you. Uh, Kettle Creek Clean Water Initiative. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have one project uh, for you to review today. I was able to get out to this site uh, earlier in March. Um, and what we're trying to do is sort of keep the ball rolling with landowner projects so that hopefully we can get these done uh, later this year. Uh, so this is a three acre site, um, as you can see by the, the picture on the bluffs of Lake Erie. Uh, that the landowners currently left fallow but is looking to enhance the biodiversity and, and the different habitat types on his property. Um, he's looking to attract some more um, birds and, and pollinators on, along this important migratory route. Um, so this site would be drill seeded with a deluxe mix of tall grass prairie, uh, both uh, native grasses and wildflowers. Um, and there will be a setback retained um, from the bluff, um, but in total about three acres uh, of land would be plant planted. So the total costs for the project are around $7,000. So we're requesting 3,000 from the Kettle Creek Clean Water Initiative. Thanks, Betsy. Any questions at all, folks? Just one, one question, uh, uh, Betsy. Is that a farmed area in, closer in, or is that just a uh, land, scrub land, brush area? Uh, it was previously farmed, but this uh, landowner um, purchased the property about a year ago, and since that um, point have, has just left the land um, just sort of natural. Okay, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions at all? Thanks, Ralph, by the way. Uh, Mr. Chair, through yeah. you to Betsy. Uh, what, how, what is the distance of the setback? I, I just I'm a little concerned about the bluffs and knowing the area, just how fast things are disappearing right now. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we'd be looking likely around a 50 foot um, setback. Um, because we know there is the potential to lose some of that land, obviously. Um, but the remaining portion, sure, in future years, there may, um, you know, be the possibility of losing some of it. But in the meantime, I think we're providing a lot of um, habitat in that area that it's, it's still a worthwhile pro um, project to undertake. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Any, any other questions at all? Okay. We have a recommendation in front of us, folks. I uh, need a mover and a seconder, please. Jones moves. Grant moves it. Mackey seconds. And Bill Mackey seconds. Any comments, questions? Seeing none. Uh, Elizabeth, can we do a vote, please? Dennis? Yes. Dominique? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Grant Jones? Yes. Bill Mackey? Yes. Steve Peters? Yes. Joe Preston? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Allison? Yes. Ralph? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay, and item G, April Planning and Regulations Report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The, uh, the stats of planning approvals and permits that have been issued by staff for uh, both March and April were put out in the advance package and we're just looking for a motion uh, to receive that information. And if there's any questions of members, I'm happy to entertain them. Okay, thank you. Any questions at all, folks? On Joe's stuff? Okay, thank you very much. Need a mover and a seconder then to receive the planning regulations activity report. Allison, so moved. Allison moves it. Ralph will second it. Ralph seconds it. Thank you. Vote, please, Elizabeth. Dennis. Dominique. Yes. Stephen Harvey. Yes. Yes. Grant. Yes. Bill. Yes. Steve. Yes. Joe. Joe. Joe, if you can hear me, raise your hand. Elizabeth? Yes. Allison? Yes. Ralph? 
Yes. Uh, this is Joe Preston. I'm back if you missed me. And was the vote yay? Yes, it was. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Okay, at this point in time, then, we're at the end of our open agenda. I just want to remind the public that we'll be moving to a closed session, and as such, of course, then everything is, is stopped as far as the public motions, the public um, broadcast of the meeting. Motions from the closed session will be shared to the public via draft minutes to be posted on April 16th. Uh, so with that in mind, just a reminder that our next full authority meeting will be May 20th. And it too, I, this, this format has seemed to work well for us. So I would assume that we will be doing the same thing next meeting. So uh, unless things, cha things cha change a lot as far as the province goes. So with that in mind, I need a motion to uh, move to close session to discuss legal personal personnel or can I have a matters. Oh, Joe, sorry. Yeah, can, can I just, I, I keep cutting in and out. So if I miss something, I want to, if, if I missed anything, let me know. But I, I wanted to, while we're still in open session, ensure that we recognize the passing of Linda Stevens. Oh, yes, thank you. And her contributions to this board. Um, we'll all miss Linda. Linda was a strong personality on this board, but on everything else she served on. And uh, we're having a little trouble at our council getting by without her. And I wanted to make sure that this board recognized her passing and, and uh, uh, recognized the great work that she had done. Thank you, Joe. Any other comments at all, folks? Perhaps before we adjourn, we could have a moment of silence. Okay. Thank you, folks. She will be missed. There's no doubt about it. And thank you, Joe, for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Okay, so we need to move to closed session. Uh, I need a mover and a, and a seconder, please. Also move. Ralph moves it. Dominique, I'll second. Dominique seconds it. Uh, uh, do we just need a, a hand vote, Elizabeth, or do we need our regular vote? Um, to go into closed, I'll take the recorded again. Okay, thank you. Dennis? Yes. Dominique? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Grant? Yes. Bill? Yes. Steve? Yes. Joe? Yes. Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Allison? Yes. Ralph? Yes. And the motion passes. Thank you. Okay, folks, so you have the phone number to contact on the agenda for the closed session. So it will be done via telephone. Any questions or comments or concerns at this point in time? Only one quick question. Yes, Are we coming back to open session? No, at the end, what we'll do is any motions from the closed session will just simply be included in the minutes of the, of the open meeting. Okay. Okay. I don't think it, it will only be a very momentary return back to open unless there's something, you know, out of the ordinary. Okay. Any other questions at all? Okay. So let's give uh, five minutes, Elizabeth. Sure. For people to uh, take a break and then come back and, and join us on telephone. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Ann, by the way, for your expertise. Uh, well done and well done to staff. Uh, you're doing a great job and, and uh, we should all be reminded of that. The fact that Kettle Creek operations continue, even though we don't see you every day. So thank you very much staff. And Elizabeth, of course, for your leadership. It's, uh, we're all reminded of how lucky we are. So thank you folks. We'll talk to you again in, in five minutes. So right now it is what time? I can't see my clock here. 11 o'clock, so 11.05, back online, back on the telephone, okay? I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you.